Hi, everyone, and thank you for taking the time to attend this presentation. My name is Nick Giordano, and I'm excited and thankful to SAM for giving me the opportunity to present this important topic of cultivating research team relationships by creating a culture of managing up. This didactic is sponsored by one of SAM's interest groups, the Clinical Researchers United Exchange, or CRUX. So first of all, I wanted to quickly run through what we hope to accomplish in the next 20 minutes. And that is specifically, we want to try and identify what managing up means in a clinical research context. We then want to discuss what some of the major challenges are that are facing us as clinical research professionals. We also are going to try and understand what the development cycle of managing up is and how to foster the growth of staff. Then we'll look at identifying some innovative strategies to overcome barriers to research. And lastly, we'll try to develop some new techniques to create a culture where efficiency is not only encouraged, but embraced. So this talk was really born out of a crux initiative to identify best practices for EM research operations. And essentially what we wanted to do was put our heads together and try to learn from others how we can overcome some of the major barriers we all face in clinical research. So to accomplish this task, we held monthly interviews with various EM research groups around the country to try and identify what led to their success as they defined it. And so over the last two years, we've interviewed a couple of uh, dozen groups and we saw that they all attributed their metrics of success to various different aspects, but they attributed the achievement of attaining their success through their culture. And they would say things like um, our culture of working together or taking responsibility or clearly communicating is what drove our success. But the big question that we had was how did they get to that point? And the further we dug, the more we noticed that there was a conscious effort among the groups to cultivate a culture of managing up. And so we noticed some commonalities among these groups. And um, the three things that we noticed were that they were great at pinging their group to get a pulse of what people understood. They also made a conscious effort to implement culture. And really what they meant by that was they wanted to convey themes to their teams. And lastly, we saw that they had a lot of common ground. And what we mean by that is they took the goals of the team and they tried to connect them with the goals of the individuals. And so this is a little bit of a chicken before the egg kind of problem because we'll talk a little bit about both perspectives in this presentation, the perspective of managing up from a manager or leader and the perspective of managing up from an employee or team member. But the impetus for managing up can come from either one of those sources, but obviously works best when, when implemented uniformly. And so really, I, I wanted to mention that we're doing this because setting the tone for managing up really creates a structural framework for your team to not only employ the principles of managing up, but to allow your team to grow to their full potential and work most efficiently. And what that causes is previous obstacles or barriers in EM research change into, you know, I can't achieve this to I can achieve this. And that was something that we saw was really powerful. And so before we dive any deeper, I wanted to you know, define what exactly it means to manage up. And I think this movie, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, actually does a really great job at, um, at defining managing up and is extremely analogous to it. And that's because uh, of the Wonka Vader. And I think of managing up as very similar to it because not only can it help you elevate your career, but it can take you any direction that you want to go in, sideways, diagonally, up and down. And if you so choose, managing up will allow you to break through those glass ceilings that we all face. So managing up essentially allows you to take the reins of your career and help to guide you towards the direction you want to go. So to put, put a more um, a succinct definition on managing up, we're doing this because it's an efficient use of time. It's going to change your perspective to that of your team and it provides job satisfaction. And essentially it's going to 
it's going to allow you to manage yourself. And so I look at someone's career a lot like climbing a set of stairs where there are various skill sets that you learn and attain and utilize throughout your career. Things like establishing your own individual principles, um, trying to embrace strategic planning, emotional intelligence, so on and so forth. And typically one learns a skill set, encompasses it, embraces it, employs it, and then moves, moves along in their career. Managing up is unique because it's almost like giving you a, uh, you know, giving you a cape and letting you fly up and quickly advance through those steps. Because what you're doing with managing up is you're adopting the perspective of your manager or your boss and learning from the skill sets that made them successful. So it's almost like the spark notes of advancement in your career. You're hitting the highlights and, and able to quickly move through the book instead of sitting down and reading each individual page. And what that's going to allow you to do is it's going to free up the time of uh, your key leaders or, or managers. And it's going to allow them to focus if they only have five minutes to spend with a team member, they can use those five minutes more effectively and efficiently and focus on things that will help the individual like um, giving them uh, more direction in their career, trying to coach them through problems, providing support, but ultimately, allowing individuals to reach their, their goals. And so we came up with a handful of tips that we're going to dive a little bit deeper into uh, in a couple of minutes. And so the first tip is to not assume that your PI knows what you do. And so we have, we have a boss in the center of the eight domains of the harmonized core competencies for clinical researchers. And typically your boss is, um, dividing their time, um, you know, if, if they are clinical and uh, research oriented, you know, it's further divided. But even if they're a full research professional, they're dividing their time among these eight core competencies. And this, this can really make um, people run thin, right? So the first tip is not to assume that your PI knows what you do. Uh, you are an expert at what you do and no one else spends as much time doing your individual role. So it, it's worth educating your PI or your boss from time to time on the challenges or obstacles that you're facing and bringing it to their attention because they might have other resources at their disposal that you don't. And so by explaining the key issues to them, it's really one of the first steps to managing up. The next is to manage your time and to respect the chain of command. So little things like developing agendas for meetings, staying organized with your work, and utilizing your time in a way that makes your team successful are going to go a long way in towards uh, progressing not only your career, but the, the initiatives of your overall group. And the last thing is working in research, there's always going to be a difference in perspectives but the key is really to disagree respectfully. And one of the take home points that we saw is that teamwork really does make the dream work. It's not about um, any one individual, but moving together as a team. We don't operate in a silo. Um, and so the next tip is really to deli not deliver news, but to create a context and a call to action. It helps so much when people take it upon themselves to do the legwork and not to copy and paste results, um, but to try and pass along to, to leadership what they need and um, to really take direction of your work. And I, I inserted this image here because um, it's a great kind of anecdotal story that I have of one of our team members uh, sent me this image of uh, some blood plasma and um, she didn't know what it was. She noticed that, you know, she drew some blood and, hadn't seen this funny red color before. So she told me that she did a little bit of research and thought that it might be uh, hemolyzed. Uh, and she said, you know, uh, the, uh, I couldn't access the normal gauge needle that we, that we use. So I moved to, I moved to a uh, larger gauge. Um, and I, I believe that might've hemolyzed uh, the blood. Nick, is there anything that I should be doing differently or, you know, what do you suggest? And this was just such a, uh, such a great response to me because uh, she did a lot of things in, in that response. Um, 
she identified the problem and took it upon herself to do the legwork to try and research what, what went wrong. And in that five minutes I spent with her, I was able to be most efficient with my time because I didn't have to get into the normal cycle of telling people what to do. Instead, I was able to instill confidence in her and reinforce her decision saying, gee, you did the exact thing that I would do and that's 100% correct. It is hemolyzed and it's probably due to, you know, the different needle that we used in the, in the smaller diameter. Um, and so if we want to talk about efficient use of time, hitting our goals, um, working efficiently as a team is so paramount to that and managing up can really help to get us to where we all want to be. And so the next tip is building upon uh, the third, and that's really to bring forth solutions, not just problems. And the mantra of there are no such things as problems, only opportunities really sets the culture for managing up and, and adopting and embracing those challenges that we have. And part of that is to really be clear on what you need in order to be successful and not to pass the buck. Um, by adopting the perspective of your PI, it's going to not only um, automate some aspects of your, of your role, but also learn from those skill sets that your, your boss or manager has learned throughout their career. And as we talked about, fly up those uh, stairs of your career. And part of that is employing analytical problem solving skills in, in, your, in your roles. And that is to really define the problem, generate alternative solutions, evaluate those solutions and implement and follow up. And the last two steps, evaluate and implement, is really where your managers, PIs are so helpful because they can use their prior experiences to build upon yours. And lastly, it's always important to manage expectations, to deliver on what you promise, and be forthcoming and communicate important information quickly. It's so important to develop your reputation, reputation by always undercommitting and over-delivering. And essentially, what these five tips are, are, are saying that good communication skills lead to great successes. So, we developed this managing up technique in four parts built off of the analytical problem solving um, model. And those parts are to really take the necessary steps to address the situation, align yourself with the priorities of your boss, and then from the perspective of your boss, suggest an action. And lastly, to ask for their advice to see if your assessment in part three were correct. So just to throw out a couple of examples and scenarios of how this could be employed in your day-to-day -day roles, um, you know, there are always hiccups with research. And let's just say one day um, you have someone who accidentally signed a patient with an informed consent form that wasn't approved by the IRB and didn't have a stamp at the bottom. You know, we typically ask people, what would you do in that sort of situation? And a normal response would be sorry. Uh, someone with a little bit more leadership skills might take it upon themselves to enter that, that error in the minor deviation log. But someone who really utilizes and embraces this, embraces managing up would say, you know, um, not only did I enter that into the minor deviation log, but I know from the perspective of my manager how important patient safety is. And I recognize that could, this could have jeopardized that. So to prevent this from happening again in the future, I'll only print out informed consent forms directly from our IRB website. Is there anything else you suggest I do? And what that really does is essentially eliminates the role of the manager and um, basically this individual is acting autonomously. And the last part about anything else you suggest I do really allows them to ping leadership to make sure that they're kind of on the, on the same page and aligning themselves with the goals of, of their manager. And it's just such a powerful response. Um, so, you know, it, it really does embrace all four parts of that technique that we, we uh, listed before. Now, a second scenario is one that we've probably all heard. Someone wants to submit an abstract in the research you've been working on. A, a typical response would be, you know, I'd like to submit an abstract. Someone with a little bit more leadership skills would mention that SAM has a deadline for abstracts on January 4th. But someone who has managing up uh, principles and skill sets that, that they're embracing would say, you know, I, I know that you're extremely busy. So I went ahead and I drafted um, uh, an abstract. And when you have a moment, would you mind editing this with me? 
Um, and that really allows uh, leaders and PIs the opportunity to spend their time most efficiently working to progress not only the team, but the individuals. So it really embodies those, those four parts of the analytical problem solving technique into the four steps uh, of managing up. So, um, you know, ultimately we're only here for 20 minutes and there's only so much we can cover. It's going to be up to you to enact this into your position. And honestly, I, I got a good chuckle when I, when I saw this picture and I, I knew I had to put this somewhere in the didactic. So as a great Billy Mays would say, but wait, there's more. Uh, I went ahead and put together a toolkit that really allows um, team members to understand the perspective of your PI, uh, allows for a self-reflection of, of individuals' needs, and finds a compatible modality for communication. And so I, I included a quick little screenshot uh, of that checklist here, but I, I'm more than happy if you reach out my emails at the end of the slide or end of the presentation, uh, feel free to reach out to me and I'd, I'd be more than happy to send uh, this to you in a PDF. So to dive a little bit deeper into some applications, uh, essentially, you know, your team uh, has a handful of um, people that they have to answer to, maybe an administrative manager, principal investigator, or sponsors, and this typically makes them unhappy. Um, but really, by embracing the skill set of managing up, it's creating this culture where bi-directional communication can exist. And that tends to add to job satisfaction and makes people um, you know, it, it just enjoy their everyday work and, and really progress through their career. So essentially what I'm trying to say is um, you know, things that we all face like burnout or other obstacles or challenges can be addressed through these principles of managing up. Um, some last minute take home points are that managing up is really all about taking the initiative to manage yourself and preparation is, is really 95% of it. That toolkit hopefully should go a long way towards setting the precedent uh, and establishing a culture for managing up. And lastly, communication is paramount and uh, clear communication um, leads to success. So I know this is, uh, we've only um, been able to, to talk for 20 minutes, but I wanted to dive into some further reading that, um, that you can hit upon if you'd like to dive into a topic a little bit more. Uh, I've pulled out all the major principles from these references in, in this presentation and this didactic, but um, you know, if, if you wanna look further into it, um, um, here are the sources. Um, Managing Your Boss is a, is a really famous Harvard Business Review article published in 2008 um, by John Cabero, uh, heavily referenced in, in a quick and great read. Um, Harvard Business Review Guide to Managing Up and Across. It's, it's a little book, um, but it summarizes a lot of materials from the Harvard Business Review and has a lot of great suggestions uh, in there. Um, Managing Up, How to Move Up When at Work and Succeed. Um, is a book by Mary Abage, and she's really a titan in the field of managing up. Um, high, highly recommend that. Uh, anyone looking to, to try and bring that culture back to their institution. Uh, Principles is a, a really famous book uh, written by Ray Dalio uh, that essentially talked about how to identify the main principles that made you successful. If you're a leader trying to stimulate a culture of managing up, I think that's, that's really the prerequisite to managing up is to, to identify what were the principles that got you to where you are. Um, Emotional Intelligence 2.0, a really great book. Um, you know, there's been a lot of research that was poured into this book and it, it really showed that, um, you know, there's um, education or IQ, or um, experience really aren't correlated with uh, self-defined metrics of success, but uh, emotional intelligence uh, is. And so um, it's so important for people to have a, a clear head, especially when working with the team. And then um, negotiating the non-negotiable, anyone can really get into conflict, uh, but it takes uh, a special set of skills to get out of that. And Daniel Shapiro does a great job of, of illustrating that. Um, Leading at the Edge is a great historical uh, leadership um, book um, written on the accounts of Eric Shackleton, who was an explorer who went to the uh, Antarctica and led his team back from a two-year trip on the brink of depth and, and of death and really encompassed so many leadership principles that are highlighted in this book. 
I, I think it's really great for, for anyone in a leadership position. So um, thank you all for tuning in. Um, I really enjoy uh, talking about managing up and the principles behind it. And I always learn from others um, that, that ask questions or reach out to me. So I'm always happy to, to answer them. Uh, please don't hesitate to reach out um, if anything uh, piqued your interest or if, if uh, you have any questions that you think I, I can uh, answer. So thanks for watching. Uh, take care and have a good day.